we're Bill and Donna Klein from Goddard, Kansas. We started uh, getting into antique tractors back in 1989. Um, we at one time had 13 of them. We restored them all ourselves. I, I, I just kind of help a little bit because uh, Bill started out having uh, rheumatoid arthritis and so I had never done that sort of things but I have small hands so when Bill's hands couldn't get into some of the places I would help. Um, we decided to go with a small one because we knew that our grandchildren and other children would never see a little tractor after the tractors all got so large. Um, one of the interesting things about the Cub was that it was built by International Harvester to replace the horses. And when they first started, um, they put a one-bottom plow behind it and it could uh, do three and a half acres and two horses could do just under one acre a day. So the three and a half acres a day was a real improvement and that's why the, the small tractors started. Um, we've had lots of interesting tractors. We had one that came clear from Ontario, Canada. It was a Super W4 and um, but, uh, we discontinued and it kind of gets in your blood. We go to tractor shows, we uh, take them to parades and always go to the Kansas State Fair. Sometimes children especially think, oh, they're just my size. But the one thing I found as we started doing this that all the little elderly men, which we're, not get, we're getting up to that now, but when we started, I, they, I wasn't but they all could remember when they first came out and what they first drove them and it was so exciting over at the fair because they would just talk for hours that they just were th so thrilled to see this tractor again all restored like it was when they remembered it. Uh, my name is Felix Torres. Uh, behind me I got a 1956 Model 500 case tractor. I restored it for my senior year of high school for the Kansas State Fair the whole, uh, everything's been restored down to the piston sleeves. I've had it, the tractor completely split in half. Um, I did all the paint myself, all the body work myself. I uh, found it in a field next to my teacher's uh, farm. Sat in the open field for 32 years. Where? Out down in Newton, Kansas. Just north of Bethel College. Uh, no, actually the farmer that owned it donated it to me since it was an FFA project and then I put my own money into it to get it to where it's at now at, show, at showroom quality and now I'm just trying to sell it yes actually at the state fair I took sixth place I believe it was with this tractor um, they do a down at the Kansas State Fair they do a thing for the FFA they have a tractor restoration competition competition and a bunch of kids from all over and when I did this my school of Newton High School had 13 tractors there just the, just alone from our school so it was a pretty good turnout and, I, and to take six out of that that's I think that's pretty good uh, no actually right now I'm a mechanic for a company in Wichita called Cheney Door I work on their fleet of trucks and scissor lifts and trailers uh, and that's what I'm just trying to pursue mechanics. I want to restore cars for one day and I'd like to do another tractor someday. Hi, I'm Jerry Burnbeck from Utica. Utica. Uh, I brought my 31 uh, Farm All Regular. I won Best of Show with last year and so they asked me to bring it back and put it on display for this year. And then I brought my 43B John Deere on steel, original factory on steel. My dad had an F30 uh, farm all when I was a kid and he never would let us drive it so when I got a chance to buy a regular and rebuild uh, it was stuck and buried in the dirt so it was a challenge but I only had to get two pieces, two little pieces from another tractor to rebuild the whole thing. So it's all original. I'm Lynn Hyatt with my husband Dale. We're from Laramie, Wyoming and we came to Hayes last year and had way too much fun so we bought some different tractors back again this year. We're standing in front of a 1948 Empire. They're made off of Army surplus Jeep parts. It runs a Willys Jeep engine, transmission and transfer case. They were all supposed to go overseas because of the surplus Army parts but that didn't happen. This one lived its whole life in the Centennial Valley in Laramie, and uh, it was a rake tractor. Okay, 
the uh, the Druby self-propelled mowing machine is uh, we have we've run down nine of them that were built and there's still three in existence and the the one Druby that we brought is around the 1948 it was built by the Druby machine shop in Wheatland Wyoming and they built mowers until they bought a patent for a Druby stacker haystacker and uh, when they bought that they just discontinued the mowers this particular mower I ran when I was 13 and 14 in the hay field and so we started working about 10 years ago and finally got it purchased and uh, uh, so this actually is one of a kind, the Druby mower. The little Bantam came from West Virginia. Um, my wife decided she had to have a Bantam, so we had it shipped in from West Virginia, and it was built by the Standard Tractor Company in Lebanon, Indiana. Oh, the Bantam is a 1957, that was the last year they made them, and it was available with several attachments. It has a little Bantam hood ornament on it, and that we added, uh, that's where one of the mowers would have attached to the front of it. We do, we do travel quite a bit uh, with this. This Empire we took to um, uh, Center Hall, Pennsylvania, to a to a uh, show back there where they was featuring the Empire tractor and there was 13 there. We took two back, uh, one for another a friend of ours and uh, and this one of ours. Oh, we we've been back to Mount Pleasant, of course. I think all the tractor people have been to Mount Pleasant, and we we do we get out and travel quite a bit. Plus, we hit our local shows. Uh, we'll, we'll get one more at the Farm and Ranch Museum in Gearing next weekend and then they'll be put away and, and at Thanksgiving time we go to the shop and, and start building another one for next year and, and we start again in about May and, and start hauling them and we haul all summer then. We, we buy and sell, I, I like to buy and sell, my wife, wife likes to buy and keep. But, but <laughs> so we have a little conflict there. The ones we restore, we usually keep. We've, we've owned about 62 of them, and um, we've only sold about three that were restored. But, uh, but I, I do like to buy and sell, and, and I got a little horse trader in me. My dad was a horse trader, so, so I have to trade a little to stay happy. Okay, they want me to tell you I'm Bob Davis. Call me Tractor Bob, we're out of Kensington, Kansas. Cindy invited us down today and wanted us to bring our candy cannon, the great green candy machine we call it. It's mounted in a 1954 Model H manure spreader by John Deere and, and we pull it with a 44A John Deere. In the parades my wife drives the tractor and I fire the cannon. And on a place like this today we just kind of gather the kids around every so often and shoot off a shot. And we're going to shoot off a t-shirt today and a stuffed animal and about 60 pieces of candy every time we shoot. And uh, just whoever gets what gets it. It's kind of fun for everybody and the kids have almost as much fun as I do. And uh, I'm not a real what you call tractor collector, I guess. I have the tractors that I kind of grew up with and the A and I've got a B at home. And I brought a little H down here today that a guy in Minnesota built up back in the late 90s. It's kind of a unique tractor. It's a UHW, we call it, because it's got a wide front and it's unstyled. No, John Deere didn't build it. It's been created by a farmer in Minnesota. One of only three that he built that he knows is around. So, hope we can win the slowpoke race with that. We're going to give her a shot. Yeah, my name is Larry Dryling. Um, I brought several John Deere engines to their 100 year show. Uh, the one I'm standing next to here is a 1937 John Deere W. Um, I also brought uh, a, a set of three, a horse and a half, a six, and a, actually a horse and a half, three and a six John Deere Type E motors ranging from a 26 to a 37. Um, I guess uh, these old motors have just always intrigued me and, and uh, 
I love messing with them. Oh, also I have a uh, Maytag wash machine that uh, later I'll be uh, making butter with. We'll have a butter making de de uh, demonstration. Uh, it's, got a, it's got a Maytag motor on it and a gas motor and it also has a sausage grinder which has an attachment. Uh, a couple of things that you could uh, get back in the day. Also have a uh, monitor lawnmower powered by a Maytag motor uh, with me. All, all very unique. I'm Joanne Miller. I now live in Hayes. I grew up at Moreland, Kansas and I drove a John Deere D tractor at about the age of 11 and it was a John Deere D just exactly like this one and I enjoyed every minute of it. Well my father became ill when I was about seven years old and so uh, myself and uh, my siblings um, went ahead and did the farming. Well uh, this is Mark Wood I'm from Colby Kansas I um, my regular day job is a farm management economist with the Farm Management Association in Colby. I work counties from uh, La Crosse to Phillipsburg to St. Francis to Sharon Springs. So uh, what this combine is, it's a 1965 John Deere 40 and uh, they built this machine from 1959 to 1966. I bought this combine specifically to use in the county fair parades. When my kids were little, they'd ride in the bin and throw candy out in the parades. Well, the kids have grown up, and now I do the parades by myself. Uh, I have a two-row corn head to go with this. It hasn't been restored yet for a little variety. And um, I bought this specific machine for parades because it was, I'm a John Deere person, and it only weighs about 5,000 pounds, which makes it lighter to haul and a little more efficient. So um, I have other antique tractors, but I actually run them, use them, and haven't got them restored yet. So my day job takes too much time. <laughs> Absolutely, my, I grew up on a farm in, uh, around Wakefield, Kansas. That's in Clay County. My dad still farms. In fact, uh, I have a John Deere 70 diesel that I use to mow uh, the church property, about 12 acres in Colby and it's the tractor I grew up on. So I've kept it and maintained it mechanically. I just haven't gotten around to get it all slicked up. But uh, it's kind of fun to hear those old two-cylinder diesels run. A lot of people tell me they enjoy just hearing me mowing because of the sound, so. Uh, my name is Kevin Dreyer. Uh, this is uh, my tractor, or basically our family's fact tractor. Uh, it is a 1936 uh, Model D John Deere. Uh, it was completely restored by uh, our family and uh, this is a tractor my uh, dad drove when he was on the farm. Where was the farm? The farm was located uh, would be south and west of Hayes and uh, the tractor uh, uh, sat in the pasture for approximately 40 years and uh, we actually had to repair the wheels and the rims uh, so we could actually load it on the trailer otherwise we were afraid it would collapse. So. Uh, after that, we brought it in. There was several years of, uh, of work and labor. Um, I just wish my dad would have lived long enough to uh, see its completion. Good morning. My name is Dana Rigg. My husband, Ron Rigg, and I live in Cheyenne, Wyoming. This is our second year down here attending the show, and we brought some friends with us. Um, I have the John Deere uh, MT 1952 pink tractor that I, my husband let me paint about four and a half, five years ago because my sister died from cancer and we have a lot of cancer in our family and there is so much cancer out there so my paint tractor is for everyone and we just go around to shows, we plow with it, we uh, go on tractor drives with it and this is our 53rd John Deere tractor we've had since we've been married and we just celebrated our 50th anniversary uh, August the 31st of 2012 and we just have a great time we belong to the Centennial Tractor Antique Tractor Club in Cheyenne Wyoming 
and we have quite a few members and we all have a wonderful time and we have all kinds of tractors and uh, crawlers and just about everything you can think of. We even have a horseless carriage in our tractor club. So Mr. Roy and Rena Holmes built the horseless carriage for us. But we take our pink tractor around and hope it kind of gives people the inspiration, gives them a smile every once, in a, every once in a while, so we're happy about that. I'm Bill Lukey and I live here at Hayes, just about a mile from this facility. And I got interested in uh, restoring old tractors in about 19 or 2005 after I quit farming. I farmed from uh, the middle 60s until 2005. And prior to that, I was a, a dealer for Oliver and Moline equipment. And so what I restore, I guess Oliver's are my number one priority. And I have Moline's, uh, Farmalls, and Co-ops, Massey, and Alice Chalmers tractors. And one combine that I restored. No, I haven't had too much trouble getting parts. Uh, there's several parts houses that uh, specialize in uh, tractor restoration parts, so very little trouble getting parts.